Assalamu alaikum. Last time we looked at uh, a theorem that tells us about what kind of worst case behavior to expect from any sorting algorithm that works by comparing elements of the original array. Today we are going to look at the same thing uh, for average case behavior. Just as a refresher, what was the theorem that we uh, we did last time? Let's write down this statement. Any sorting algorithm that works by comparing elements of the array to each other must perform at least uh, let's uh, write down this thing properly. Must perform at least um, log n factorial. We have to do ceiling of that, and that's log base 2. Uh, comparisons in the worst case. Okay, so let's see here. Um, let's add with uh, um, let me add the ceiling here, and this is log base two. Okay, it's important to understand um, clearly what this statement means, and not to make some mistakes that people may make in understanding this. For example, some people think that the worst case cannot exceed log of n factorial by the way last time we also showed the log of n factorial is uh, has the same theta complexity as n log n um, we're not we're not saying that we're saying even the best algorithm will have at least this much worst case um, you could have of course um, a very bad sorting algorithm that uh, does everything in n cube time or n square time. For example, selection sort. Selection sort always performs in n square time. Um, so, but of course, n square is at least log of n factorial, which is n log n, right? Um, just as a refresher of how that proof roughly worked, imagine let's say we are working um, on element uh, five element array. And in that case, the input can be in one of five factorial, which is 120 configurations. So now let's say we start with 120. Um, possibilities right the algorithm does one comparison and based on that comparison if it does a good job uh, the best it can expect the best it can accept ex expect sorry is that that comparison reduces uh, the number of possibilities to 60 if the comparison is true and if the comparison is false like if let's say AI bigger than AJ uh, there are five inputs here. So let's say A2 bigger than A4. 60 of them have that is true and 60 of them have that is false. Um, so if you're tracing the worst case, the worst case of any algorithm, which means like let's assume it does the best job possible. Let's assume it does the best job possible and then see what's the worst case it will still have. So now because there are 60, 60 doesn't matter. Let's pursue one of these branches. Let's add. Uh, uh, let's it asks another it does a, another comparison and let's say if the comparison is well done it uh, it breaks it into 30 and 30 um, possibilities on this side 30 percent on this side uh, then let's take one of these 30s 15 possibilities on this side 15 on this side. Now, if you take one of these 15s, 
in the best case what will happen is that the question will break the number of possibilities into as closely balanced two sides as possible which is seven and eight in the worst case let's see wh where the eight goes so eight gives us four and four again this is we are assuming the best possible performance of the algorithm uh, a best possible algorithm and looking at the worst case of a best possible algorithm the worst case of a best possible algorithm this goes to two and two when we are down to two possibilities we still need one more question until we can decide whether it's this possibility or this possibility so let's see how many comparisons did we do we we asked a question here right one then two then three then four then five then six and then seven okay uh, the ceiling of log of base 2 of 120 which is 5 factorial is indeed 7 because the next power of 2 next perfect power 2 is 128 which is 2 to the power 7 so yes um, using this uh, kind of binary tree approach um, we can see indeed that any sorting algorithm that works by comparing elements of the array to each other must perform at least seven comparisons in the worst case on at least one of the inputs uh, if it's uh, let's say uh, working on uh, array of in, uh, size five if its input is size five then it must perf must do at least uh, um, seven comparisons at some point uh, for at least one configuration of the input um, so in a way what we are saying here is that um, we are basically saying that if you start with n factorial um, uh, possibilities and if you do a, a, a you know, any any binary tree that decomposes that n factorial until you reach a, until you reach size 1 must have at least one branch going all the way to the end that is depth has depth of seven okay that needs seven steps to reach a size of one okay so this was just um, a refresher of last time and another way of saying it and so th this algorithm uh, this theorem sorry is about is about a worst case we're gonna today look at the average case behavior of uh, any sorting algorithm that works by comp uh, sort comparing um, elements of the array to each other. So over there, what are we asking for? So we need some little bit uh, knowledge of uh, binary trees. Let's say I have um, a binary tree of size, let's say. Eight, eight nodes um, or let, let's, let me not do eight I'll do six so let's say if I have six possibilities at the beginning if I were to make it as balanced as possible I get three three here one two and this is one one and similarly this is one two and this is one one let's compute the average depth of this tree average depth means um, average over all the possible Look at all the paths uh, terminating leaves. Look at the depth divided by the number of paths. So what do we have here? Um, uh, what I'm going to do is next to each leaf, I'm going to write its depth. 
so for example going from 6 to 3 to 1 I, I have a depth of 2 here and this leaf has a depth of 3 3 uh, this is a depth of 2 this is a depth of 3 3 so the average here is Two plus three plus three plus two plus three plus three divided by six, uh, which in this case is two plus three plus three is eight. Eight plus eight is um, sixteen. Sixteen divided by six, so that's. 2.67 roughly. That's the average depth. Let me make another node, uh, another tree with six leaves, six terminating nodes. Uh, what happens? Can I can I do better average depth? Okay. Uh, so let's say again we start with six. Let's say this time is the first step was a little bit more unbalanced. Here is one. One. Uh, this so far looks good because now I have two nodes just from one branch at a depth of only two. I'm trying to minimize my depth here. On this guy, if let's say if it was two and two, and then one and one. Let me write down the depth numbers next to each of the terminating nodes, uh, leaves. So I have depth of 2 here for this guy, 2 here, and each of these is depth 3. Right? It took 1, 2, 3 steps to reach it. So the average depth here is also 2.67 because it's 3 times 4, which is 12. 12 plus 4 is 16. 16 over 6, same, right? Okay, so I didn't I didn't gain anything. Okay, let me make it even more imbalanced. Let's make it uh, six one one goes here and five goes here. And let's say I make the this guy more imbalanced. Um, of course, like even here, I could have made more imbalance, but for sake of purposes, uh, for this purpose, it's enough to see this. Okay, let's write down depth numbers again next to these. This is depth one, this is depth two, then these guys are all depth one, two, three, four. So what's my average depth now? I have one plus two plus four plus four plus four plus four divided by six again. What do I get? I have four times 4 is 16, 16 plus 3 is 19, so obviously it has gone up, it's 3.17, okay. so the depth went up. Um, basically, this is a theorem, obviously this is not a rigorous proof, uh, theorem about binary trees, it says that the average depth for a tree, for a binary tree, with given number of leaves, um, is minimized by a tree 
that is as bad as possible at all levels. Um, if there are and leaves, then the then the average um, depth is log of n. Here, I'm not going to put ceiling because the average, of course, can be fractional number, right? As you can see here. Um, and in these trees, you can also look at the best depth and the worst depth. The worst depth is three, three, and four in these three trees, respectively. But I hope you can be convinced by looking at the fact that the more imbalanced the tree, the depth goes up. You don't gain anything by imbalancing the tree. So the best hope you have is to balance the tree as much as possible. Um, so then what that says is that, so let's say, um, uh, you know, we, we were sorting an array of size five. So we start with 120 possibilities um, and so on and so forth. So this automatically translates to theorem about the words, uh, about the average case. So any comparison, uh, sorting algorithm, any comparison based sorting algorithm, where all the comparisons, which let's say works, which starts by comparing elements of the array each other. Must have average number of comparisons, average of across all possible input configurations. Okay. Equal to at least um, log of n factorial. Uh, well, obviously, if n, you're, you're sorting n, uh, if you're sorting n guys, the number of possibilities to sift through is n factorial. So this is. Um, and why at least? Because uh, as you can see here, uh, the best case uh, of depth is log of n, where here began represented the number of uh, leaves. So in a sorting algorithm, the number of leaves is n factorial, because you have to be able to distinguish between every possible input uh, to be able to sort it correctly. Um, and here, I don't need to put ceiling, because the answer could be fractional. So it has to be at least this much. What this means now is that we have two important lower bound theorems. One was for average, uh, uh, one was for worst case, and the other one is for the average case. And if let's say, let me bring uh, my, say I have. Let's go back to size four. Let's say I have some algorithm. Let's give it a purple color. Sorting algorithm. Somebody has claimed to make a sorting algorithm, and its running time. For these cases, is um, let's say running time in number of comparisons. I meant to say four here, three comparisons, three, four. Um, Three. 
these are the number of comparisons um, so somebody comes up to us and says i have an algorithm my algorithm is specifically for let's say size 4 arrays and it does this many comparisons for these possible for if the input is in this configuration it does only this many comparisons this many comparison it is a very complicated algorithm it has a very complicated if then else if then else and so on and so forth we say all right all right let's check what is um log of four factorial is all logs are base two yeah so and and we want ceiling of this which is how much it's ceiling of log of 24 is roughly 4.58 i think so if i take ceiling of that i get 5 If this algorithm, this alleged sorting algorithm is comparison based, this algorithm cannot work properly. It's impossible for such an algorithm. Why? Because it doesn't have a worst case of five. Our worst case theorem said that any sorting based algorithm should have at least log of n factorial ceiling, which in this case is five, should have at least five comparisons for at least one of the configurations if you're working on uh, input of size 4 there is no uh, you know in here right worst case is 4 which is less than 5 so it is impossible For this to be the case which means either this algorithm whatever this guy's algorithm either doesn't work correctly it doesn't sort every time correctly it, it may not sort some of these inputs or he has made a mistake in recording this or whatever this is not just it's just not possible okay um, so yeah um, that's what the worst case uh, algorithm tells us now let's say another guy comes up to us or maybe the same guy he says okay 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 i i fixed it i have now um let's call it algorithm b now okay algorithm b and this time he says my number of comparisons is three 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 two three two two on this inputs three on these two on these Three on these. This one is seven. It's going to be three, two, four, three, three. Okay. Is this possible? Let's check. His worst case. So, worst case. His worst case is seven, which is five or more. Okay, so <clears throat> possible, potentially possible, right? But let's look at average case. What is his average case performance of this algorithm on all possible inputs? Okay, average case. I have to add up how many threes do I have? I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, three, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 16. I have 16 threes plus how many twos do I have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 twos. What else do I have? I have twos and threes and, and I have a seven and I have two fours, or only one four maybe. It's one four. Okay. This all has to be divided by 24 because there are 24 possible configurations. Let's see what do, I, do we what do we get? Let's do this. I'm going to do this in the calculator.
is 2.875 okay 2.875 unless I made a mistake here let me check here again let's double check 48 plus 10 58 yes 2.875 is that possible no because above theorem says that we must have average of at least um, log of 24 which is roughly um, which is roughly how much was it 4.58 so this not possible again if this is a comparison based algorithm this is impossible that this guy has an algorithm so good whose average is 2.875 it's the this time it's not the worst case that's too good to be true it's the average is too good to be true okay so this is um, uh, our important reference points two theorems one talks about the worst case one talks about the average case of comparison based sorting algorithms and um, we, we call these are called lower bound algorithms because they give lower bound on the performance of algorithm you can't you can't go below that bound you can't have worst case lower than ceiling of log n factorial and you can't have average case better than log of n factorial it's just impossible okay so yes so we will uh, conclude this uh, lecture at this point